All right, we're going to continue with this teardown of this uh, watch for Lenny. Um, let's get that keyless works out of there. I took the stem, or left the stem in, I should say. And uh, that makes it nice to take things apart. That stem holds holds everything in place until you get, let's see, are we in the shot? This is a, I'm a little tight here. Let's back up. Can't see what I'm doing. Can't see the forest because there's too many trees in the way. Pretty straightforward stuff from now on. From here, I wanted to say that this, uh, the, uh, the other other side of this watch was running real good. The balance, the main train, was uh, appeared to be running very good. So I think our only problem was those hand setting gears, all that mechanism. If you notice, I don't have any gloves on because uh, we're going to clean everything. I'm not worry, really worried about much as far as tarnishing or any oil contaminants. Um, speaking of oil, if you look on that spring, there it is. See that glaze? See that oil? That's too much. Right here. Let's point that out. That's too much. we got too much oil in this movement, and I think that's part of the problem. Uh, oil on very slick, smooth surfaces like the date ring actually become a binding agent. They cling together very, very well. Let's see. Let's get this up there. So, too much oil is a bad thing. Moore's Law does not always apply when it comes to timepieces. More money? Yeah, that's okay. More beer? Sure. More wine? Okay. Not necessarily oil when it comes to a watch. Okay, that thing's being a bugger. It's probably being a bugger because it's a pretty precise fit. It just took off and landed on my bench. There it is. Not a problem. And here is a spring. That spring is loaded. And that does come out. That is not crimped in. Let's unload that. Come on. It's not liking that. Let's take the lever out first. What do you think? No. Maybe it is crimped in there. It does seem rather tightly held. Okay. okay. Alright, let's just take this out first. Let's get that out of the way. Take the stem out. Okay, now the spring is unloaded. We can take the lever out. Can we get the spring out? Yes, it is not crimped in. Just held in there. Okay. Pretty straightforward stuff. Pretty dirty. Pretty messy. Okay, here's our shock spring our shock spring I like to put a little vertigo on there because when that thing comes out it might go flying so a little dab of vertigo does the trick release that spring come around this side There it is. 
attached to the rotico. I like that. It's always a nice thing. It's a jewel and capstone. So there's that side of the movement. Looking good. I don't think we're going to have any problem with this balance because this was ticking away nicely. We're not going to, well, we shouldn't have any problems. I say that now. And we're on the topic of balances and capstones and shock jewels. Let's do this one before we remove the balance. Are we in the shot? Okay. There's one side of the spring. Might take me a little more time because I am making sure I am in the shot here. Okay. Can you see that? There it is. That's removed. And we're going to take out the stone and the capstone. Which I just dropped. Probably dropped it into the movement there. There it is. It fell in with the balance, so I just turned it upside down, gave it a tap, and it popped right out. So there's our stone, uh, jewel, balance jewel, and capstone. We can take the balance out now. I'm going to have to pull back, people. There you go. Working a little too tight. Straightforward stuff, just like my last videos on this particular movement. Nothing extraordinary from here. I could just stop and say, you know what? Watch my last video and you'll see what I'm doing, but I'm not going to do that. We'll inspect this later. Make sure it's okay. I'm sure it is because it was ticking away nicely. But you never know. So, now that we got that out of the way, the delicate parts, let's remove. Look at that. That wasn't even tight. That screw, I hadn't didn't even have to lean on it. And it, it just turned loose. So, another indication of the previous service. Those do require quite a bit of torque to stay on there. And they're hardened. Very hard screws. Uh, that arbor is a very hard steel, for sure. That spring decided, or that wheel decided to take off on me. There it is. Didn't go far. And the two uh, uh, milled slots on the other side of this screw indicates it is a lefty. So we're going to turn this to the right to loosen it, to reverse the red. Hmm, that was in the shot, I'm surprised. We'll take the click out later. This will help expedite things. Here's the back side of that. It's got some lubrication. And if you look, that shiny spot. That's got some wear on it. I don't know why. Shouldn't have that much. It's minimal because it's just the top of the bridge there. We're not going to worry about that too much. We're going to take this bridge off. The main train bridge. I guess you would call it. Three screws. While I'm at it, I'm going to loosen the... We're going to take the main spring barrel bridge off. I think I need a little drink. Don't worry. No Sauvignon Blanc. 
sparkling water ice cold sparkling water okay <clears throat> off with those three screws and that bridge will lift right off as I drop a screw don't worry didn't get far and here's our mainspring barrel assembly if I can get a hold of it There we are. Now, continuing with this bridge and screws. Where do I want that? Let's put those over there. Everything's going into a parts tray. Easy access, easy cleaning later. This bridge should pop right off. Let's get a blade under it. There's a little relief there to get a blade under it. Okay, main train bridge. There's our second hand pinion. Looks to be in decent shape. Where do I put that? I guess right there. Another wheel. Don't know what it's called, doesn't matter. Here's our escape wheel. That I know. That can come out. Let's take that intermediate bridge out next. Two screws also pinned. Let's focus. Are we in focus? Yeah, my light source is from the one side and I'm creating shadows as I do this. But it's it's coming across, I think, fairly well. I'm also trying to work from the screen, not just the part. I guess that's a skill to work from a screen instead of the actual part. Intermediate bridge, eh, I don't know, whatever. I just know what it is and what it does. I can tell you what this next bridge is, pallet fork bridge. Pinned in three places, look at that. One, two, three. And two screws. It's a big, a big bridge. For such a tiny pallet fork. You would think with all those screws and pins, it would be a high stress area. I think it's more of a high precision placement. And there is a relief. There's a tiny relief right there. We can get a blade under and pop that loose. Look at that. And it popped. Very precise fit. Very close. Here's our pallet fork. I'll inspect all this stuff later. And here's our center wheel, which is connected to the cannon pinion. Cannon pinion should come off with hand removers. Let's find out. Yes, it does. There you have the cannon pinion. Put our plate back in to the holder, our main movement plate I guess you would call it and it's being a little tight hmm that's interesting why is that tight that should just slip right out I think what we have is a little build up on that center jewel of some dirt Dirt and grit probably coming from the 
hand winding gears and their pivots. Let's see, how does that look? That, eh, that looks pretty good. We'll get a close up look later on that. So here's our plate. Our plate is all done, but it's it's a no it's no good. This plate is from this side. All that is just wore out. This is wore out, that's wore out. Well here's the good news. I have an old movement. Pretty ratty. Uh, serial number 3220 and the original one here is 3884 so it's in the 3000 range so it's close it is a 17 jeweled maiden USSR obviously uh, I put a stem in here and it clicks over the date perfectly it winds or it, it moves everything the hand settings nice and slick and smooth it's a 26142H everything's identical so I'm gonna I'm gonna rip this apart off camera and we're gonna cannibalize parts there it is 3220 and we're gonna rebuild this for Lenny so he has everything he needs and we'll have a nice timepiece it'll be clicking away nicely um, so that's it for now I'm gonna get things cleaned up in the next video we're going to assemble this this guy and uh, see how it looks okay stay tuned